We are at ISAT today talking with Bob Sire from Pratt & Whitney. Um, Bob, could you give us an idea of how progress has evolved on the GTF engine at this stage? Well, Addison, we've, we've made significant progress on our testing. We've actually tested nine engines to date, totaling about 2,000 hours and over 5,000 takeoff cycles. And we've completed all of the initial phase of our testing that really allows us to to assess and validate engine design characteristics and what we need to do to tweak them before going into uh, the final production configuration. So we've now completed that and we're now in the detailed certification phase where over the next 10 to 12 months we'll be running critical tests that will validate the requirements of the engine for airworthiness. In fact, we've just completed our first major test series which was doing icing in our new uh, cold weather facility in Manitoba, Canada. And as the engine, as you've gone through the different versions of the engine and the variations within each version of the engine, what have you seen in terms of changing um, output of the engine, the numbers, fuel burn? Have you, what kind of improvements are you seeing? Well, our, our overall objective is to is to achieve the contractual obligations that we've made to Bombardier and Mitsubishi on the original on their first two models. And the engine at test, the initial engine that went to test back in September 2010, was quite close to that. It was a little bit of off the mark, but what we've been doing over the last 15 months or so is looking at the initial test results. What do we have to adjust in terms of weight or aerodynamic characteristics in the engine for fuel efficiency? And today, you know, we're right on where we want to be. So we're really pleased. Um, in the characteristics, so we've optimized it to achieve the contractual obligation that we've met to, you know, made to our initial customers. And the first engine should be flying hopefully by end of December, hopefully before early January. Yeah, well, we deliver we deliver engines to Bombardier at the end of the, you know toward the end of the year. Or so, um, you know, I know they've said that they're still targeting first flight end of you know, end of this year. Um, I would ask you to. To talk to them on first flight schedule, but right. we're on track on the engine, and we will deliver the engine on time. And on spec. And on spec, which That's is a major, major achievement. But at the same time, as you and I have talked, we did a very extensive program in 08 with our demonstrator engine. So the engineering team at Pratt has done a good job, but we've also done a lot of pre-work to ensure that we can get there. And how much testing do you have to go yet before you send the first engine over for for flight? Uh, we'll do a, probably about another 1,000 hours of testing this year on the C-Series engine before we deliver that, you know, the first engine to Bombardier. It's all certification driven, so it'll be doing critical testing like fan blade out, bird ingestion, and then uh, endurance testing, which is so the, basically time and time at temperature. So it's, it's not like you have to redesign anything or tweak anything, you're basically... We're there. We, that, that's what we've been doing over the last 15 months or so. You know, understanding the engine and doing those those minor changes or those adjustments, but we've now completed that. So, and could you speak perhaps to the C series process that you've been going through with that engine? How that plays into the MRJ engine and down the road to Neo? Well, the um, all of these all three engines, you know, the seventeen thousand, the twenty four thousand, and the thirty thirty three thousand pound engine are very similar in architecture, similar in technologies, and similar in architecture. They all use the the gear. Uh, as that enabler in terms of the design. Now there's differences due to size, materials, temperatures, pressures, so we do have to make subtleties for each of the models. But as we run one model, whether it's a C-Series or an MIJ, there is learning that we have that's applicable to the other models. And, and as we've been testing C-Series and MIJ engines, we've actually made some, of the, we've actually incorporated upgrades into our Neo engine that's on its first design cycle. You know, it's the engine is in, de, in its design phase today, and it will be at test later this year. So we're actually incorporating improvements. You know, they could be weight reduction, they could be temperature uh, reducing designs in terms of making the engine more fuel fuel efficient, so we can improve maintenance characteristics of the engine. So as we do learn on one, we apply to the family. There's been a lot of talk about the 777X and the fact that all three big engine companies were given RFPs. Um, can you share anything with us in terms of how Pratt is thinking about the, the 777X and, and its 
engine, I guess, is going to be a geared proposal? Well, today we've, uh, we've actually tested about 7,000 hours and over 80,000 takeoffs on our fan drive gear system, which is really the key enabler on this, uh, this engine architecture. And today we've, we have found no restrictions in terms of thrust, so we believe we can take our gear system up to 100,000 pounds of thrust. And as we go to higher and higher thrust, the benefits of the gear become stronger. You get more effective, more effective value out of a bigger fan. We run temperatures cooler, which are good for hot section capability or maintenance costs associated with the engine. And we can do it with an engine that's shorter with fewer parts, improving the installation of the engine on the airplane. So we're excited about, about looking at wide body, uh, wide body applications and, and looking at our ability to leverage this architecture. Do you have to come up with a completely new core for an engine like that, or can you use something that you have already? Uh, no, it's, it's a, a new core by size, and it will also be a new core by going to higher pressures and higher temperatures to improve fuel efficiency. Because as we make advancements in our technology, it's our plan to bring that across the engine, whether it's a fan blade for improved efficiency, or whether it's a high compressor or a high turbine to provide value to the customer. Because at the end, it's all about making sure that we leverage our technology suite for lowering engine operating costs at the airline. One last question. Um, in the Boeing presentation at ISTAT today, we heard a very interesting formula put forward that specific, specific fuel burn, weight and drag, are the, that's the magic formula to look at the engine on wing in terms of the improved efficiency comparing, let's say, one engine to another. I'm very intrigued, if you look at those three issues, how would you break down, if let's say the three of them add up to 100% of impact, how would you break down specific, specific fuel consumption, weight and drag? Well, all three are critical, and, and the Boeing presentation was right on in that we can all make an engine more efficient in the test cell. It's what it brings at the airplane level that's important. So there's three elements, specific fuel consumption for the engine, and that has a factor of about 80%. It's, it's the most domineering in terms of how, what an engine's bringing to the aircraft. But there's a weight and there's a drag that gets coupled to that as to how it brings value to the airplane. So since we've been talking the gear turbo fan, you know, 2004, 2005 in this current architecture, you'll notice that in all the Pratt Winnie presentations, we only talk fuel burn. We don't talk engine specific fuel consumption. So when we say our engine's going to deliver 16% in fuel burn, Typically, the engine is producing 18 or 19 percent in specific fuel consumption improvement, and then we lose two to three percent for having more weight or higher higher drag associated with the bigger fan. But the net effect is we're still dropping aircraft fuel consumption by 16 percent, which is what's the important metric. So when you said that SFC would be 80, 80 out of the hundred, how 80, would 80, 10 percent on weight, 10 percent on drag. Roughly, so you know it could be 75, 15, 10, but the the most domineering characteristic is how much fuel does the engine consume to produce the basic power, and then there's a weight debit and a drag debit that one has to account for when we install it in the airplane. And any thoughts on on how the Boeing argument is made in terms of a, a, an airplane lower to the ground than the Air, uh, than the Airbus airplane? in terms of fan size? Well, I think what, Bo what Boeing was basically saying, there's more to, than to just size, which, which is true. I mean, you, have to, you have to look at the power that the engine has to perform. You have to look at how you install it, how much weight, how much drag. So, so there are key characteristics that, that as we work with an airplane manufacturer, you know, it's important that we work with them to optimize the engine versus an engine manufacturer trying to optimize it uh, independently. Because what we might do at the engine level may not be optimum. In fact, it probably will not be optimum at the airplane level. You really need to look at it from an integrated perspective. And that's what we do with our customers. Thank you so much. Thank you.